Good morning. I'm Fred Munala from uh, Bokalson High School. Uh, today, I want us uh, to start looking at uh, this uh, new topic, which is uh, salt preparation. Uh, I think the other day, when I was with you, we had covered more about uh, uh, the acid and uh, bases reaction. So for today, let us see how we can prepare salt and uh, the methods that we use uh, to prepare salt. But uh, before we can start looking at uh, the methods that we can uh, use to prepare salt, we have, uh, we have to know those salts that are soluble and those ones that are insoluble. Because the methods uh, that we use to prepare these salts depends on the solubility of those salt. So this table will help us uh, to answer some questions. Yes. So you have said I write big things. Okay. Wait, 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 so that I can start afresh. We start afresh. I'm Fred Munala from uh, Bokolson High School. And uh, today I would like us uh, to cover something about uh, salt preparation. Uh, this is actually a topic in uh, year 10. And uh, before we know the methods that we use uh, to prepare, salt before we cover more about the methods that we use to prepare salt we also need to know which salts are soluble in water and which one are insoluble in water because uh, most of the methods that we use uh, in uh, preparation of salt depends on the solubility of uh, these salts in water so the table that i'm going to draw here will assist us uh, to know those salts that are soluble in water and those ones that are insoluble in water. So let us have this table. We see how it can help us.
this table is going to assist us know those salts that are soluble in water and those ones that are insoluble in water. Because I've said, the methods that we use in prepa preparing these salts depends on the solubility of these salts in water. So, for example, when I say ammonium nitride, this is a salt. I will, say, I will again say ammonium chloride, that is a, a salt. So let us see those salts that are soluble and those ones that are, are insoluble. The following will help us to know how we can fill this table and uh, how we can tell that this salt is soluble or insoluble. Uh, the first information that we need to know is this one. All sodium, potassium, and ammonium compounds are soluble. All sodium, potassium, and ammonium compounds are soluble. So when I come on this table, I go, I go where ammonium and potassium Ammonium, potassium, and sodium are. They are saying all ammonium compound, all potassium compound, and all sodium compounds are soluble. That is what they, what, that is what they are saying. So, where I use a tick, that means that salt is soluble. Where I use a tick, that means that salt is soluble. So they are saying ammonium, all of the ammonium compounds are soluble. That is. Ammonium nitrate is soluble. Ammonium chloride is uh, soluble. Ammonium sulfate, which is a salt, or it is also soluble. Ammonium carbonate, which is also a salt, it is soluble. Ammonium hydroxide is also soluble. They are also saying this. Potassium nitrate is soluble. Potassium chloride is soluble. Potassium sulfate is also soluble. Potassium carbonate is also soluble. Uh, potassium hydroxide is also soluble. In addition to that, they are, they are saying this. Sodium nitrate is also soluble. Sodium chloride is also soluble. Uh, sodium sulfate is also soluble. Sodium carbonate is also soluble. And then lastly, sodium hydroxide is also soluble. So you can see uh, from the point that uh, we are given here uh, that is saying all ammonium, potassium, and uh, sodium compounds are soluble. It comes through when we fill the table like this. That means when I will be preparing potassium sulfate, I should put in mind that uh, this salt is soluble. When I will be preparing, for example, sodium uh, carbonate, I should put in mind that uh, this salt is uh, soluble. So I have to apply a very good uh, method that uh, can make me uh, actually obtain the solid part of this uh, salt. Uh, let us move on. Uh, we are being told again, all nitrates are soluble. All nitrates are soluble. The second point that we need to put in mind is this. All nitrates are soluble. This is the column of uh, nitrate. This is the column of nitrate. And uh, we are being told the nitrates are soluble. So that means potassium ammonium nitrate is soluble. Potassium nitrate is also soluble. Sodium nitrate is also soluble. Barium nitrate is also soluble because I have said I'll be using tick. I've said I'll be using tick to show that uh, this salt is soluble. So I'm saying barium nitrate is also soluble. Calcium nitrate is also soluble. Then magnesium nitrate is also soluble. Aluminium nitrate is also soluble. Zinc nitrate is also soluble. Iron nitrate is also soluble, lead nitrate is also soluble, copper nitrate is also soluble, then silver nitrate is also soluble. This means all the nitrates are soluble in water. That is uh, what that point is saying. Then point number three, uh, which will help us fill this table and know those salts that are soluble and those ones that are insoluble, says this way, 
Most common chlorides are soluble. Most common chlorides are soluble, except, except, put that except in mind, except lead to chloride and silver chloride. I repeat the point. All common chlorides are soluble, except lead to chloride and silver chloride. Only those two chlorides are insoluble. That is what they mean. Only those two chlorides are insoluble. Which are these two? Lead to chloride and silver chloride are the only chlorides that are insoluble. The other common chlorides are insoluble. Come back here. Let us see how we can fill this table. They have said all common chlorides are soluble, except two chlorides. We have uh, the silver chloride. Where I put across, that means that salt is uh, insoluble. So the silver chloride is insoluble and uh, lead to chloride is also insoluble. But the other common chlorides are soluble. So that means we start with ammonia. Ammonium chloride, potassium chloride, sodium chloride. That means this already they are soluble. And then barium chloride is also soluble. Uh, calcium chloride is also soluble. Magnesium chloride is also soluble. Aluminium chloride is also soluble. Then zinc chloride is also soluble. Iron chloride is also soluble. But uh, they have said lead to chloride is insoluble. That is why we have this X. Where we have X, it means that salt is insoluble. And then copper to chloride is also soluble. Silver chloride, you can see we have uh, an X here. That means this salt is insoluble. X shows that the salt is insoluble. Tix shows that uh, the salt are soluble. So that is how we can fill this column of chlorides. Then we move on. Point number four. <clears throat> Most common sulfates are soluble. Most common sulfates are soluble, except lead to sulfate, barium sulfate, and sil barium sulfate, silver sulfate, and uh, calcium sulfate. I repeat, most sulfates are soluble, except, let me put it on board, except lead to sulfate, where is it? Lead to sulfate, it is here, lead to sulfate, it is here, it is insoluble. Another one which is insoluble is uh, barium sulfate, Barium sulfate, where is it? Barium sulfate is also insoluble. Another one, another salt that is insoluble is this one. Silver sulfate, silver sulfate, silver sulfate is here. Silver sulfate, because we have sulfate. Silver sulfate, it is here. So silver sulfate is uh, insoluble. Uh, another sulfate that is insolu insoluble is uh, calcium sulfate. Calcium sulfate is also insoluble. So I repeat this point again. They are saying this, all the common sulfates are soluble, except the four sulfates that I have written here. The sulfates that are insoluble include barium sulfate, it is insoluble in water, calcium Sulfate, it is also insoluble in water. Lead, sulfate, it is also insoluble in water. And then silver, sulfate, is also insoluble in water. But the rest are soluble. So let us put ticks to those salts that are soluble. The other salt that are, have ticks, ticks, that means they are soluble in water. So when we will be preparing the sulfates, we need to know the correct methods that we use. The method that I will be using to prepare, for example, ammonium sulfate. Because ammonium sulfate is uh, soluble in water, I cannot use the same method when I'm preparing, for example, calcium sulfate. The same applies to this. I cannot use the uh, 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 same method when I'm preparing calcium sulfate and uh, uh, lead sulfate. The method 
varies depending on the solubility of this salt in water. Then uh, uh, another point that we need to know that will help, help us know the salt that is soluble and insoluble in water is this one. <coughs> mm, most common, most common carbonates are insoluble. Most common carbonates are insoluble, except sodium, potassium, and ammonium carbonates. Most common carbonates are insoluble, except sodium, potassium, and ammonium carbonates. So, in other words, they are saying this. Except these three that have ticks, ammonium carbonate, ammonium carbonate, potassium carbonate, sodium carbonate, those are the only carbonates that are soluble. The rest are insoluble. So for the rest carbonates like a barium carbonate is insoluble, calcium carbonate is also insoluble, magnesium carbonate is also insoluble, aluminium carbonate is also insoluble, uh, zinc carbonate is also insoluble, lead carbonate is also insoluble, copper two carbonate is also insoluble, silver carbonate is also insoluble. So all the remaining uh, carbonates that have crosses means they are insoluble. That is what they are saying here. All potassium, oh no, all carbonates are insoluble except sodium, potassium, and ammonium carbonate. That one has helped us uh, to know the carbonates that are insoluble in water and the carbonates that are soluble in water. So we only have three carbonates that are soluble in water, but the rest are insoluble. Ah, yeah. Next, most metal hydroxides are insoluble or almost insoluble. Most metal hydroxides are insoluble or almost insoluble, except sodium, potassium, and ammonium hydroxide. This point is very clear. Most metal, all these are, all these are metals. Year 10, all these are metals. I repeat again, year 10. All these are metal, except this one, ammonia. So all, all of the rest are metals. And we are being told from this statement, most of metal hydroxides, we are on the last column. Most of the metal hydroxides are insoluble, except, except sodium, potassium, and ammonium hydroxide. So that means ammonium, potassium, and sodium hydroxide, they are soluble. But the others are insoluble. Let us see uh, more information about this. Uh, they, they are going ahead and saying this, calcium hydroxide is slightly soluble in water. So in short, they are saying if ammonium, ammonium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, and sodium hydroxide are the only soluble hydro metal hydroxide, the others are insoluble. But when it comes to calcium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide does not, oh, it is not soluble in water and uh, it is not insoluble in water. It is slightly, slightly soluble in water. So how can we put it on this table where I use a dash? That means that salt is uh, slightly, uh, slightly soluble in water. So we are being told this, calcium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide is slightly soluble in water. So let us use a dash dash to represent slightly slightly soluble in water uh, and the rest the rest are insoluble so we start with this one barium uh, hydroxide is insoluble it is a metal hydroxide which is insoluble but for calcium hydroxide we have been told it is slightly uh, slightly soluble in water so let us use a dash 
Magnesium hydroxide, it is also insoluble. Aluminium hydroxide, it is also insoluble. Uh, zinc hydroxide, it is also insoluble. Iron uh, hydroxide, if, if it is uh, there, it is also insoluble. Lead hydroxide, if it also exists, it is uh, insoluble. Copper hydroxide, if it can exist, it is also insoluble. Silver hydroxide, if it can exist, it is also insoluble. So, where I have uh, placed uh, crosses, that means those hydroxides are insoluble. Where we have ticks, that means those salts are uh, those salts are soluble. And where we have dash, it happens to be only in one box. That is calcium hydroxide. It means that salt is uh, slightly soluble in water. So quickly, let me go through this again. I'm saying this year 10. Ticks represents those salts that are, are soluble. X represents those salts that are insoluble. And uh, a dash represents those salts that are slightly uh, soluble in water. Why am I insisting on this? The methods that we use in uh, preparing these salts, it, the, all of the methods uh, depends on the solubility of these salts in uh, water. If a salt is soluble in water, we cannot use uh, the same method to prepare that salt and again apply that method elsewhere uh, for a salt that is uh, insoluble in uh, uh, water. So the method varies uh, depending on uh, solubility of uh, this salt. So quickly let us uh, see what they are saying. In short, they have said this. All the compounds, I start again, all the compounds of uh, ammonium, potassium, and uh, sodium are soluble in uh, water. Which compounds are these? We can see. We have these compounds, ammonium nitrate, potassium nitrate, sodium nitrate. Those nitrates are soluble in water. This, we still have the other compounds, chloride, ammonium chloride, potassium chloride, sodium chloride. Those compounds are soluble in water. Then sulfates. Ammonium sulfate, potassium sulfate, sodium sulfate, those are still the compound of those uh, metals. They are also soluble. Come to carbonates. Ammonium carbonate, potassium carbonate, sodium carbonate, those compounds are also soluble. And then hydroxide. The hydroxides of those compounds, although of those uh, metal and ammonium, are also soluble. So you will realize that uh, from our previous chapter, we said uh, potassium and sodium actually are metals from alkali metals. And alkali metals are very reactive. That is uh, what we said uh, when we were covering more about uh, the alkali metals. So their compounds are all soluble in water. I think now this table will assist us uh, to know uh, how we can prepare uh, some salts which method we can apply and why the, me the methods of preparing this uh, salt are not uh, alike. Uh, from this, we now start looking at how we can prepare one salt at a go. Because all of these are salt. So we can start looking at the methods that we use to prepare each salt at a go. I want us to start by looking at uh, methods that we use uh, in uh, making soluble salt. So our next heading is our next heading is making making soluble salts. 
and uh, this soluble salt they exclude the following sodium potassium and ammonium salt sodium except except sodium potassium potassium except potassium and uh, ammonium ammonium salts so <coughs> we start looking at uh, the methods that we can use to prepare soluble salts except sodium potassium and uh, ammonium salt so which methods uh, can we use to prepare this salt the common methods that we use to prepare a soluble salt include reacting solids with an acid the common methods that we use in preparing soluble salt include reacting not include but the common method that we use to prepare soluble salt involves uh, reacting a solid with uh, an acid so i want us i want to give here a summary of how we can prepare this uh, soluble salt the first method that uh, we can use uh, in preparing soluble salt is this one situation where i will react an acid acid directly with a, a metal yeah then we all know this when we react an acid with a, a metal we have said except you will not react sodium potassium and uh, ammonia you cannot react sodium potassium and an acid actually yeah then i think i have taught you this sodium and potassium are or reacts with a, uh, an acid explosively so we don't react that is why we have except sodium potassium and ammonium salt we don't prepare them in this using these methods that i'm mentioning here we can use the other met the other metals react them with an acid and then we obtain a salt but we don't react these two metals with an acid they react explosively with an acid either dilute or uh, or concentrated acid they react explosively so we all know these are uh, 10 acid plus a metal leads as a, or ends as a, leads to formation of metal salt and uh, metal salt and uh, hydrogen gas so this is the first method that we can use to prepare soluble salt soluble salt the soluble salt we can use this first method reacting an acid with a, a metal because we have been told the common method that we can use to prepare soluble salt involves reacting a solid with an acid so the first solid that we have here is this one metal plus an acid we end up getting metal salt and a hydrogen gas let me give an example of uh, let me give an example of this metal zinc and uh, uh, hydrochloric acid if i may say if i may represent the acid with uh, or if i can use one of the acid that is in the laboratory uh, that is uh, hydrochloric acid hydrochloric acid reacting with zinc metal zinc metal the metal salt that will be obtained is uh, zinc chloride chloride 
And uh, obvious, we will have, uh, because this uh, metal that is uh, uh, an acid, we will have uh, hydrochloric, not hydrochloric, but uh, hydrogen gas. So I, I think I have given an example where we use a metal and an acid to obtain a soluble salt. And I'm just using zinc in this uh, case to represent one of the metal or to show that uh, we have some metals that uh, moderately reacts with the uh, acids. So we have uh, this example. Uh, another method that we can use uh, in uh, preparing soluble salt is uh, by reacting, is by reacting acids with oxides. Metal oxides. Oxides. When I react an acid with the metal oxides, then we end up getting a soluble salt and a soluble salt and a water. Actually, metal oxides are bases. When a bases react with a Metal oxide are insoluble bases. When uh, bases react with acids, we end up uh, uh, getting water and uh, a salt. Water and salt are neutral substances. So the reaction here is called neutralization reaction. I'm saying this year 10. Metal oxides are bases, insoluble bases. When bases are reacted with uh, acids, we get a salt and water. Salt is a neutral uh, substance. Water is also a neutral substance. So the reaction is called a neutral reaction. So any acid reacted with a metal oxide, we get metal salt, which is uh, soluble, and uh, water. Not now hydrogen but we get water. For example, let us use this. Mm, let us use this. Mm, let us use this. Again, I will use uh, hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid. Acid. Plus uh, mm, zinc oxide. Zinc oxide is a base, insoluble base. Hydrochloric acid is, a, from the name itself, it is an acid. When the two are reacted, we end up having what we call neutralization reaction. So we have a salt being formed. A salt that will be formed here is a zinc a chloride, chloride plus water. That is uh, what you have to know, year 10. And uh, another method also that we can use uh, in uh, preparing soluble salt involves reacting an acid, an acid and uh, metal hydroxide. Year 10. Hydroxides are soluble bases. Remember I have said, oxides are insoluble bases. But now we are on hydroxides. Hydroxides are soluble bases. So when this base, it is just a, a common reaction. The way we started with this topic, we said this uh, year 10. Bases plus uh, uh, acids, we end up with uh, a, a salt and uh, water. So this one being a base, this one being an acid, we will end up with a salt and a water. That is a, a general reaction, an acid reacting with a base. A base will neutralize an acid. What, the, what do they mean? Neutral products will be formed. So acid plus a metal hydroxide, we end up getting metal, metal, uh, metal, uh, salt plus uh, water. 
metal salt plus water. Let me give an example. We can have this uh, yaten, sodium, sodium, hydroxide, hydroxide, which is uh, our metal hydroxide, plus hydrochloric acid, hydrochloric acid, hydrochloric acid. When we have these two reacting, neutral products will be formed and the neutral products that will be formed include the salt and water only because we we were told earlier in this uh, chapter that uh, acid reacting with the base two products are formed and these two products salt and water only so the salt that will be formed here is uh, sodium sodium chloride and uh, water is also formed. So that is only when we are reacting uh, uh, soluble bases under uh, an acid. Then uh, lastly, lastly, uh, the, the other method that I can use in uh, preparing soluble salt is this one. I can react this solid. I can react this solid. That is uh, the carbonate. Carbonate. I can react the, the carbonate with the, the carbonate with the uh, acids. Here, ten. What you have to know is now carbonates are different from the others that we have been talking about uh, here. When I react an acid with the carbonate, whether it is a hydrogen carbonate or metal carbonate. For example, we can have sodium hydrogen carbonate and we can also have uh, calcium uh, carbonate. Whether it is hydrogen carbonate or metal carbonate, so long as it is a carbonate, three products are produced. For example, you can see in the other examples we have been having two, 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 two products being produced. But when I'm reacting a carbonate and uh, an acid, three products will be formed. Which one and which one and which one? The products that you have, uh, because I'm preparing salt, the products that are, will be formed, one will be metal salt, which is soluble, metal salt, which is soluble, plus carbon, 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 four oxide, carbon four oxide, and uh, water. The four, the three products that will be formed include metal salt because actually these are the methods that we use in preparing salt. Uh, metal salt. And then we have uh, carbon four oxide and uh, water. For example, I always like giving examples. For example, where we have uh, calcium, let me use uh, the chemical equation, where we have uh, calcium, uh, calcium carbonate, calcium carbonate, calcium carbonate, calcium carbonate, reacting with the hydrochloric acid, HCl, calcium carbonate reacting with the, uh, HCl, that is a hydrochloric acid. We have uh, three products being formed and the three products will be calcium, which is the positive part of this compound, picking the negative part of this compound, which is the chloride ions. Calcium chloride will be formed, and this will be our salt, calcium chloride, plus uh, water will also be produced, and uh, CO2 will be produced. So carbon for oxide will be produced, and uh, uh, water will be produced. So this is uh, another method that we can use uh, to uh, make 
soluble salt. So let me go, let me quickly go through this again. Methods that we use in preparing soluble salt. It is very simple. The method that we use in preparing soluble salt involves uh, reacting a solid, some solids with uh, uh, an acid. And which solids are these? We are talking about metals, metal oxide, uh, carbonates as the solids. So those are the solids that we are talking about. Don't tell me a stone is a solid. So I can react a stone with uh, an acid to get a salt. No, a stone is not among these solids that we are talking about. The solids that we are talking about include the metal, uh, metal oxide, the carbonates, those are the solids that we are talking about. So an acid is reacted with uh, uh, the solids that are mentioned here so that we can, uh, uh, we can obtain the soluble acid, uh, the soluble salts. For example, the first, metal, the first me me method is here, acid being reacted with a, a metal. When an acid is reacted with a metal, think this one we did in year nine and we are still meeting it. When an acid is reacted with a, a metal, any metal, we end up getting a metal salt and a hydrogen. And note this year 10. We are saying we cannot react the alkali metals with the acids. That is why we are being told here, except sodium, potassium, except sodium and potassium. We cannot react these metals with an acid. Their reaction with the acids, their reactions with the acids are very explosive. So we don't use them when we are working with acids. So any other me metal that is uh, moderately reactive with an acid can be used, e.g. zinc, copper, uh, lead, etc. Those metals uh, react with acids moderately can be used when we are preparing this soluble salt. So a metal reacted with uh, uh, an acid, we end up getting metal salt and uh, hydrogen gas. I have used an example of these metals, zinc metal. Zinc metal and an acid, I have used hydrochloric acid. So hydrochloric acid reacted with uh, uh, zinc metal. We end up uh, getting a soluble salt, that is a zinc chloride and hydrogen gas must be there because uh, it is a reaction that involves a metal and uh, an acid. Number two, another metal that, another solid that can be used is uh, metal oxide. And uh, I earlier mentioned or said this, metal oxides are insoluble bases. So these bases, when they are reacted with an acid, we all know at this level, uh, in year 10, we all know acid plus uh, bases, we, we have uh, what we call a reaction that we call neutralization reaction. A base will neutralize uh, an acid and we will end up getting neutral products only. And what are these neutral products? A salt is a neutral product and water is also there which is uh, another neutral product. So we have uh, this. An acid reacting with this insoluble metal, we end up getting a metal salt and water. I'm using this example still on hydrochloric acid. In this case now, I will use zinc oxide as my metal oxide which is insoluble, base. So hydrochloric acid plus zinc oxide, I get zinc chloride plus water. Number three, we can have a soluble bases. The soluble base that we have uh, in this case is uh, metal hydroxide, alkaline solutions. These, are, uh, these uh, hydroxide are alkaline solution. What do I mean? This one are soluble bases. So when we have this, acid reacting with metal hydroxide, it is also a neutralization reaction. Because I'm saying metal hydroxide, those are soluble bases. 
base reacting with an acid, neutral products are formed. So we will end up getting metal salt and water. I'm using in this case a sodium hydroxide to represent a soluble or base. So sodium hydroxide plus hydrochloric acid, we end up getting sodium chloride plus water. These two are neutral substances. Then number four, which is uh, our other method of preparing soluble salt is uh, uh, reacting carbonates with uh, acids. When we react carbonates with acids, now uh, we will not have two things, uh, two products being formed. Instead, uh, we will have uh, what? We will have uh, uh, formation of three products. Carbonates reacting with uh, acids, we have uh, formation of formation of a salt, carbon four oxide, and water. And in this case, uh, I have used calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate reacted with uh, hydrochloric acid, we are saying we will have uh, a salt. In this case, a salt that will be formed is uh, calcium chloride. And then number two, we will have uh, CO2. It is a must. When, where we have a carbonate, it is a must. We will have uh, a salt, CO2, and water. Even if I change so that I can have sodium hydrogen carbonate. Let me, let me put it here. Sodium, sodium hydrogen carbonate. Sodium hydrogen carbonate. Sodium hydrogen carbonate. When we have this, I'm saying again, uh, yeah, 10, three things are produced. So, sodium hydrogen carbonate plus HCl, we have uh, a salt being produced. The salt will be sodium chloride. Sodium chloride. Sodium chloride will be formed plus uh, CO2 plus uh, water, plus uh, water. So those are, uh, those are uh, three products that will be formed. Those are three products that will be formed. So even if we have uh, sodium hydrogen carbonate or any other carbonate, the products are still the same. So I think that is uh, what we can say for today. Tomorrow when we meet, we will be looking at the preparation of uh, sodium, potassium, and uh, ammonium salt. Remember we have said those salt are soluble. So we will look at uh, a suitable method that we can use uh, in uh, preparing this uh, soluble salt. So for example, tomorrow we can be preparing sodium chloride, sodium nitrate, sodium sulfate. Those are soluble uh, compounds of this salt. Uh, tomorrow we can also look at potassium nitrate, potassium chloride. Those are soluble salt. So we, can, we will see the suitable method that we can use when we are preparing those uh, soluble salt. But the general methods are here. When we'll be talking about uh, uh, methods that we use uh, in preparing soluble salt, the general methods are here. We'll only be picking on one solid, which is here, and then reacting with a suitable acid, we end up uh, getting, uh, getting uh, getting uh, uh, a suitable salt. For example, if I want to get uh, sodium sulfate, I'll just pick, I'll just pick suitable reagent, for example, sodium, sodium sulfate, if I want to obtain it, I'll just pick sodium hydroxide plus uh, sulfuric acid. When I react the two, we will have uh, formation of uh, sodium sulfate and uh, the water. So that is uh, what we are going to do uh, as from tomorrow. Thank you for uh, listening. I think uh, if you have questions, you can uh, ask when we meet 
later or you can uh, come in the staff room we see what we can do thank you